executives are paranoid. And this comes from this famous book that was written by a legendary CEO named Andy Grove from Intel, if you guys are all familiar with Andy Grove. And he wrote a book titled, Only the Paranoid Survive. I think if he was alive today, I think he would change that and say only the hyper-paranoid survive. <laughs> and that's because change is happening so fast. And he said that in every point, there's that strategic inflection point that is either going to determine whether your business grows or your business declines. Now, the interesting thing is that point looks nice here on the graph, but in reality, that could be number of months or years. So how do you determine? That's looking backwards. You know, as Steve Jobs said, you can only look at dots going backwards. So that's a point when you look backwards. So how do you determine that point when you're looking forward? You've got to determine whether something is a signal or noise. And in his case, and it's worth reading this book, he determined very quickly, well, it wasn't that quick. He said it took two or three years. When Intel was losing to Japanese competition in memories, he had to make a tough choice. Do we continue to fund, remain in the memory business, or get out and go into something else? And he decided that Intel had to be in the microprocessor business. And as a result, Intel became a dominant company. You know, we talk about Intel and all that. That was that decision. That was that strategic inflection point where he had to make a decision. I had to make a change. To bring this home even much closer, when you want to give something more, a vivid example, you turn to Hollywood. And specifically, you turn to one of the Godfather movies. In this case, I want to refer to Godfather Part Two. If you remember that scene where Michael Corleone <coughs> goes to Cuba and after his meeting with these business, uh, not business, political leaders, he stops at a point where they're making an arrest. If you remember that. I've seen this scene so many times. <laughs> and one of the rebels, instead of being taken alive, he takes out a grenade from his jacket and he explodes it and he takes out the captain with him. As he was going to the party of Hyman Roth, now again, these are all mobsters, but they're all business executives, okay? So I just want to make it clear. <laughs> And during the, while they're having the party, Michael mentions this, and Hyman Roth's henchman, Johnny Ola, just dismisses, ah, these are a bunch of lunatics. And then Michael says something very interesting. He said, you know, I was thinking about this, that it occurred to me that, that military police are paid, but rebel, rebels are not. And now Hyman Roth is getting a little worried here, and he's a great acting job by Strasbourg. So Michael, uh, what does that tell you? And Michael says, they can win. Signal, there's something going on here. There could be a revolution. Do I want to invest in Cuba or not? Hyman Roth, on the other hand, dismisses it completely. He said, Michael, this rebel activity has been going on here for 50 years. There's nothing to it. Don't worry about it. Your father and we have gone through this. And the good news here is that Michael did not make the investment in Cuba. The bad news was he got pulled into Godfather Part 3. <laughs> <laughs>